Alright, so, uh, here's our podcast. I- okay, well, I'll go ahead and tell you <laughs> this. Up. Yeah, I already screwed up our podcast, but I actually already thought of a name, and here's what the name's gonna be. Well, I was in the other room, this came to me. So, Can we're Luke Smith me? and Ryan Smith. No our place. podcast, exactly, our podcast is gonna be called No Relation. No Relation. Oh, no that's relation. so good. I yeah. love that. So, that, that's a good one. That's works out pretty fun. And that, and it doesn't tie us to linguistics. So That's this is, true. So, I, I brought the idea to Ryan a couple of weeks ago. We should do a podcast, just because... Uh, I'm lazy and I don't want to produce content on YouTube, like, yeah. screencasting is hard. But we, like, spend so much time talking about, like, all these things that people don't really care about. But maybe, <laughs> maybe they do. Maybe we can get people, uh, not because I want you to care about, but just because they're right. interesting subjects. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe we should give background uh, on who the hell we are, uh, in case you're one of my YouTube subscribers who just, like, ran across this thing, or someone else. So the two of us... Actually, do you want to introduce yeah, us? Yeah, I can, I can introduce us. So the two of us are graduate students in the Department of Linguistics at the University of Arizona. Um, you know, we both care about really boring... Well, I care is a strong Yeah, care, care is a strong <laughs> we, we do think... We, so. we, we both do, like, formal, like, syntactic work, you know, broadly construed. So Very guess, broadly construed. Yeah, Luke's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a maverick in that, oh, you know, he kind of... His, I'm not like those other linguists. Yeah, his, his shtick is basically taking, you know, um, things that people have argued um, are due to some special syntactic component and trying to reduce them to interactions like with phonology or that's his troll point. It's all phonology. Just whatever pisses sound. people off. Yeah, anything that pisses people off. Yeah, I guess in a certain way I'm a little more conventional, though my thing nowadays is that everything is semantics, everything's yeah, yeah. meaning. Good, good troll point. Yeah. But for those of you, I know that, I'll just go ahead and say, again, because I know a bunch of my YouTube subscribers are going to be clicking onto this. If you don't give a shit about what we just talked about, don't worry, because we, <laughs> we talk about some high quality stuff, there might even be some GNU slash Linux, not promising that. We'll definitely be shitting on WordCucks, definitely, <laughs> no doubt about that. Um... But so, yeah, law tech master race. Yeah, law tech master race. Um, so today, I think we're going to talk about something that's a little more clickbaity and that, that's actually relevant, and we'll see where that goes from here. Uh, and check in the video description. I'm going to put like time codes of all the stuff we talk about in case you don't care. But so here's the news. So the news, which I guess people know now, is for the past couple of years, Noam Chomsky has co been coming to the University of Arizona yep. more often and more often. Yeah, and so in my first year, which was, I guess, three years ago now, he came for a weekend, and then the next year, he came for, like, a week or two, yeah. and the year after that, he came for, like, what, a, like yeah. a couple months, yeah. and now he's here forever. Yeah, so <laughs> Noam Chomsky is officially employed by the University of Arizona, and he's moving out here. I mean, you gotta gotta give catch him a break, because he is old, so, he, you know... Old people, they want to live in Tucson for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no one else wants to live here. It's a terrible place. Don't, <laughs> don't move here. It's a blasted hellscape, as, as they say. Yeah, as, as I, I believe that was Dane. That's Dane. Dane, Dane, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Chomsky's moving out here. And I, I get a lot of questions from a lot of people, not just on YouTube, but otherwhere. Like, people... Otherwhere. Otherwhere. Other places. <laughs> <laughs> makes, makes sense in some way. Yeah, language. yeah, yeah. It makes sense. So, a lot of people ask me, like, uh, uh, you know, people assume, oh, God, Noam Chomsky, the most cited living academic he's coming to your school and like isn't that aren't you so excited yeah aren't generally you, aren't the, you pumped for this yeah so yeah, ryan how do you feel aren't you excited about noam chomsky coming to arizona big fat meh <laughs> meh <laughs> <laughs> all right so so and I, I think ryan's sentiments are shared by pretty much i, I think pretty much all the graduates students. yeah so this is something that i say a lot um like in conversations with you i think there's a big disconnect between the faculty and the department and the students. Yeah. So the faculty... In many ways. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but in this particular case, the faculty are all over Chomsky. They're just like, oh my god, we've got Noam Chomsky. I'm going to push, I'm going to meet with him all the time. Like, every time he's here, I'm going to push my students to meet with him. Um, you know, like, he's a great asset. He's a great modern oh, linguist. And most of the students here are just like, yeah, take it, you know, yeah. take it or leave it. Yeah. Some people are, like, actively hostile to his framework. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a massive, there's just this massive difference, uh, between the faculty and the students. Yeah. I don't think the professors really realize just how big that is. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, and I think part of it, it's not just like 
you know, in the abstract, there's nothing wrong with us getting a hugely famous linguist. Yeah, sure, sure. But it's just like no one, so I guess we're sort of at the cusp of what I'd say is a kind of a paradigm shift or, uh, you know, in linguistics. Not in the sense that, like, there's some new idea, but, like, yeah. people are sort of, like, they've given up on the whole Chomsky meme, like, yeah. in a lot of ways. And even the, in Even in, like, his own field, you know, so, like, in formal generative syntax... Yeah. You know, people don't really pay that much attention to his work. It's like maybe like one or two people like intensely follow it. Yeah. Everybody else just yeah. goes about their day. You know, yeah. does their own work. Is concerned yeah. with their own problems. Well, how the field? Well, I mean, you gotta you gotta explain how the field of linguistics has worked for the past sixty years. Yeah. Um, so more or less. So you know, Noam Chomsky. Fact, linguistics is only sixty years yeah, old. It's only after sixty all. years old. Yeah. That's, so back. In 57, he published this book, Syntactic Structures, that revolutionized um, modern linguistics, kind of ushered in an era um, of generative linguistics where um, the main idea behind it is uh, that language is generative and is, so, you know, you can generate basically an infinite number of expressions without, um, with no hard limit. So Um, as, as opposed to, like, you... Memorizing a bunch of sentences and words, so the yeah. ge- idea of generativity is like you memorize. You have a formal system. You have rules, and mm-hmm. these rules produce all the sentences. You don't memorize them; they're part that they're generated. Right. right. Just to in, in a, I guess short, in short, um, what is it? Infinite use of finite means. In, yeah, that's the thing that he always quotes from von, Hol- von Humboldt. I don't know. Yeah, if that's, that's right. Actually. Yeah. But I, so I, I'll go ahead. So what you said is right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you know, I get a little tribbered. When people attribute to Chomsky what isn't actually, you know, originating in Chomsky. Mm-hmm. But I, I just like to go ahead and, yes, like, so Chomsky made this huge like paradigm shift, and he's usually cre- credited with, uh, you know, destroying the behaviorist paradigm mm-hmm. as well. That's another thing. But I just like to say, in this, I want, there's a sociological aspect of the field that mm-hmm. I want to get out of the way, like, super quick. Yeah. And that is how the field in practice works is that Chomsky doesn't really do that much empirical work. He's not really interested in that many data problems. He right. doesn't really know that. He doesn't work from a lot of different languages. Chomsky, what he does is every couple of years he writes a new theoretical paper yeah, I was gonna mention with this. sweeping generalizations. And how the field works is they just sort of take, like, you have to understand, when you read Chomsky's stuff, even if you're pretty witty, a lot of times it, you, you really have to either think about it or sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, and so what happens is a lot of people read this stuff and they'll squint their eyes and they'll look for, they'll find all these patterns mm-hmm. that maybe not aren't necessarily there because Chomsky's always writing in this way to like evade criticism. Yeah. And so people will look at these theoretical papers and they'll make crazy conclusions and they'll do whatever. And what ends up happening is that every time Chomsky says something, everyone go like... There's this huge apoplexy about, oh god, how are we gonna do this now? We gotta totally revolutionize. Yeah. When Chomsky's just saying things, like, yeah, this is... that's really the cycle, you know, the cycle of uh, generative syntax. It's, um, you know, everybody like builds. So, you know, Chomsky publishes a paper. People build up uh, some theoretical constructs, uh, account for a whole bunch of data. Then Chomsky writes another paper saying, oh, let's let's get rid of this um, theoretical construct now, and everyone goes, oh shit. Yeah. That's what accounted for everything. Well, we better, you know, take what we have and try to build it back up again. Right. So it's like this process of, um, I guess, uh, like just like birth and death, yeah. <laughs> rebirth, yeah. basically. It's it, like a big cycle. And there are two main examples of this that I think are good. One is the one me and Ryan were actually talking about this before we turned up on the recording. But um, last year, or maybe last semester, when Chomsky came here and gave a lecture series, there's this one lecture where he... Tr- started like he he came with a new narrative and we 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 won't go into the specifics here about what that is because i don't want to scare you away it's the first episode um but basically the idea is like this core computational mechanism he just totally rewrote it and uh you know it's now about saving economizing on workspaces and all this stuff and no one a lot of the people who listened to the talk didn't really get it uh i did i wasn't paying attention i was making memes during the talk anyway (laughs) But, like, a lot of people, like, didn't get it, and they were sort of wondering about it. And for the next 24 hours, yeah. everyone was, like, racking their brains. Like, oh, God, yeah. we got to overthrow oh, everything. Oh, God. Would, like, this, this changes everything. He, re- he completely redefined it. What are the implications? Yes. This is going to be big. Yeah. And then the next day, at the next lecture, Chomsky comes in and says, yeah, that was dumb. 
Yeah. Sorry, guys. Forget about it. <laughs> and and that's that's a microcosm of how it works on a, a larger scale. Yeah. I mean, the, the other example I think is the change from what's called principles and parameters to what we now call minimalism. And the, yeah. the, the boundaries between these are very you know, ambiguous or whatever. But you know, the, the idea of principles and parameters, those linguistic students might be familiar with this, but the idea is like, so languages, there are principles of languages that mm -hmm. are constant across all languages. And there are also parameters, and that's like, so some languages have objects before the verb, some after. They're yeah. like binary choices, mm -hmm. you can have these parameters. And this was the way of thinking of linguistics for quite a while, and there were a bunch of constraints and, uh, you know, additional, like, sort of theoretical machinery that came up to explain how things work. Yeah. Now, in the mid-90s, Chomsky comes out with something called the Minimalist Program. And the Minimalist Program was not motivated on any kind of... I mean, it's, it's not like a, a Kuhnian paradigm shift in the sense that, oh, there was bad data uh, in the, the principles and parameters thing, and minimalism solved that. What Chomsky basically did is he made sort of deontological arguments for why, not necessarily principles and parameters was bad, but why we should totally reformulate, reformulate linguistics in a way and start from a, basically destroy everything, yeah. lose all of the, the, the actual ability to account for any data, and start from like really conceptual very, necessity. Very basic assumptions, essentially, right. yes. And so, and, and people look at this, it, it's... You know, I, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person who does like theoretical clarity and like mm -hmm. efficiency, and I don't mind uh, doing what Chomsky calls the Galilean method, which just means ignoring data sometimes. <laughs> um, but this was a, a well, situation... They refute the theory, the theory is wrong. Right, so Chomsky's idea basically threw out the entire field, and I mean, minimalism by itself doesn't really do much. In fact, when you learn syntax at a graduate level or even a higher undergraduate level you're still being taught principles and parameters just because minimalism doesn't do anything right and this is and again or really i should say that minimalism only makes sense to the extent that it does in the context of principles and parameters right. so you build up principles and parameters and then when you get to like maybe a grad course or at the very 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 end of your first syntax yeah. course they say okay now we're going to throw all that out and yeah. people just say well wait why? Why didn't you just tell us this yeah. from the beginning? Didn't we waste a bunch of time? You know, well, maybe. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but well, also, you, are, you are in yeah. a linguistics class. Yeah, so, yeah. But, well, there's that. <laughs> but also, uh, you know, like just the, the shift to minimalism and all the, all the arguments in the literature don't yeah. really make any sense unless right. you have that background of uh, what, we would, what yeah. came before, government and mining theory. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for me, I mean, you can make... Uh, academic arguments for why minimalism might be good, but that's that's not really the point I'm getting at. The point I, I'm getting at is like how Chomsky, like how the field functions as a personality cult for Chomsky, mm -hmm. yeah. in that he writes things people don't necessarily understand them, but they go along with it and they like yeah. write things that are basically their interpretation of what that might mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Chomsky, I, I sort of alluded to it before, he has a he has a very particular way of writing and arguing. Um, that is, he doesn't like to be tacked down on any kind of claim, and I think that's sort of an egoistic way of avoiding, like, being falsified or being shown right. false. And I, I think that's something that everyone has, but Chomsky is, I don't know, he's sort of unique in his way of, of, of doing this. Yeah, Chomsky can pretty easily claim at any point that he's had this idea since the 50s, essentially. Right. Yeah. He'll say, you know, somebody will say, well, you, you've clearly changed your view on this, or you've adopted this other person's view, and Chomsky will say, well, uh, actually, you can trace this back to my work in the 50s. Yeah, yeah and, and of course, the whole field, due to this sort of personality cult, is willing to go along. I mean, I forget who, which... You know, one famous linguist came to a colloquium lunch. I don't remember. It wasn't Lasnik. It was someone else. But this guy was talking about how he's rereading old Chomsky stuff, like syntactic structures. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, again, when you put on modern goggles with the squinty eyes where you <laughs> can barely see the text and you just see what you want to see, you see all the, oh, wow, these gr great intuitions just hidden away. Yeah. When it's really like, I mean, it's like the people who, it's it's like people who do Bible code. You know, you know oh, what Bible yeah, code is? Yeah, it's like when you, when you find patterns in the Bible about prophecies, you know, yeah. if you, that, that's what this is. You know, it's <laughs> this exegesis of Chomsky. You know? Yeah, totally. Well, something, something that also is kind of funny about Chomsky is that Chomsky gets a lot of credit, I guess, in the, I wouldn't necessarily say popular press, but, yeah. um, you know, like in broad overviews of linguistics, and even within linguistics itself, yeah. but, and I think you hit on this earlier, um, but he, uh, a lot of 
like the real advances in syntax are not due to Chomsky. They're right. due to his students, you know. Right. So like some big concepts, you, you know, those of you listening don't actually need to know what any of these things are, but you know, <laughs> yeah. things like, you know, island effects, um, you know, unaccusativity, right. those sorts of things that, you know, are really important even now. Those are not Chomsky's doing. Chomsky yeah. You know, he didn't discover any of these things. These were all his students. And really what Chomsky does is, you know, he just kind of lays, like, conceptual, I guess, um, groundwork, yeah. sort of. Yeah, um, it's often not really even clear. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think, uh, you know, one narrative that I think me and Ryan have been implicitly running with uh, is that, you know, Ryan recently took the uh, Taleb pill. Uh, that is, I, I forced him to read. So anyone who hasn't read Nassim Taleb's Anti-Fragile, you, you gotta read it. You gotta read it. Yeah. You but really do. one of the like minor little notes he he notes in there is that like a good scientific paradigm isn't necessarily one with theories, but one with phenomenology. Yes, and what, what, exactly. What that is supposed to mean is like, um, you know, the things we learn. Well, we'll put it in the context of linguistics. A lot of linguistics has been like theory internal garbage that yeah. no one cares about. Like, you know, oh, what's a you know a, a phasal you know yeah. boundary? What you know, all this. What what, what's cycles? a CP? What's a T? Who gives this shit about yeah. any of this? Do what all are, languages have the same categories? Right. Blah, 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 blah. So that's one thing. And when the theory changes, that doesn't matter anymore. That's all fucking out the window, basically. Yeah. What What does matter is phenomenology. Right. That is what data alternations do you see, mm -hmm. what things actually change, right. because even when the whole Chomsky and paradigm is dead, these things matter. Yeah, these things will carry on. Right, yeah. and these things universally are pretty much discovered by either minor linguists or people working outside of the, the sort of Chomsky and oh, the autism about, you know, how we're going to pick about, you know, these minor theoretical details. Yeah. And, you know, we found actually very interesting things, like I, you mentioned unaccusativity and mm -hmm. things like this, where... There are different types of uh, intransitive verbs that have right. different, they have minor meaning differences, but they actually have enormous syntactic effects. Right, exactly. Like exactly. And no one, even if you go back a thousand years to like earlier linguistics, people didn't notice this. Right. Um, so this has been, you know, things like this, these are important. Mm -hmm. What isn't important is the, um, the, the idea of we have to have a certain theory with certain assumptions as you know, some professors in our department might say. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> certain ones. <coughs> yeah. But you know. Yeah. Certain students as well, or at least C former students. students. Well, certain students parrot the idea. Oh right? well, yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. But yeah, totally. So I think you know, I I think syntax, well, generative linguistics more broadly, has made a lot of important discoveries. You know, like you said, you know, so discoveries that are gonna matter. You know. Like a hundred years from now, maybe more, hopefully more. You know, like like Ross's dissertation on islands. That's a, right. that's yeah. important empirically. You know, yeah. like people, not even necessarily people like in syntax. Right. You know, might care about these things. You yeah. know, so you've got like uh, psycholinguists. You know, uh, people who study the psychology of language, right. who are interested in these processing effects and um, you know these islands, which you know maybe in a in a later lecture or something or a later uh, podcast we can talk about yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. In more detail, um, you know these are important for uh, processing uh, issues. So you know they they get cashed out in the in the linguistic real world yeah. as well. Uh, so that's going to stick around, and and I think it's important to have an uh, you know at the very least an ontology you know a phenomenology yeah. of what actually occurs, stuff that like anyone can agree on. Yeah. Um, you know, regardless of whether you you yeah. know believe in minimalism yeah, or distributed yeah, yeah. morphology whatever yeah, yeah there, there are a bunch of these frameworks that like they just don't matter you know they just i mean and uh, me and ryan have both you know said the same thing when we read articles in linguistics mm -hmm. we don't really give a shit about the analysis or like what they're arguing we give a shit about what data they're presenting yeah because that's what actually matters for what whatever generalizations are they actually contributing right because yeah. all of these a lot of these theoretical papers uh, I mean, it's, there's so much, well, put it this way, when you read an article, especially in syntax, there's so much noise. Yeah. There's so much stuff that doesn't even matter outside of the very n narrow confines of that article. So, mm -hmm. yeah, screw that stuff. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, so ho hopefully that gives people a general idea of, like, how we're feeling about the field. But, of course, you know, we're going to go, I don't know, you have, I, I was thinking we might talk a little bit more about, like, the, the minutia of Chomsky coming here, like the oh, non-theoretical... Yeah. Um, oh yeah, sure, sure. So where do you want to start? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. So you know, Chomsky—he's yeah. a famous guy. 
He's a big guy. He's a big guy for everyone. For everyone. Um, and uh, so there, there's a bunch of hubbub. Yeah. So did I tell you about the guy who slept on Chomsky's roof? No. Oh, I didn't? Oh, okay. Great. Perfect I, opportunity. I, I'm glad I saved this for the podcast then. Yeah, I was talking to Tom and Leah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll give the groundwork. So, um, you know, basically, you know, Chomsky's a hugely famous guy. He gets shitloads of emails. He has shitloads yeah. of stalkers and stuff like that. Yeah. Most of, I mean... Most of them are, like, people who like him, who stalk him. But there's apparently this cult. I don't want to say cult, but, you know. <laughs> what you just said. Basically a cult of people who are, like, Chomsky-obsessed. Uh, and they, they're not from Tucson, but they're from around here. And they uh-huh. caught wind of Chomsky moving here. And apparently, somehow they found out where he... So Chomsky, I don't think he's actually here yet. But he's got a house, and he's going to be moving in. Or maybe he... I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? Anyway, these people found the house he, that he had bought, and they, like, took ladders up and, like, slept on his roof, or something like that. And, uh, and the guy posted something on social media about, oh, God, I, I slept on the master's roof. Oh, this is so wonderful. And oh, yeah, they left, like, beer cans and shit like that's that. That's nuts. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of mentality that I think people have. You know, and, of course, most... Most of the people care about Chomsky's politics. Yeah. Um, which I, I guess is going to be a part of him being here. But Oh, sure, yeah, sure. Like, he, he teaches courses. And, like, he taught a politics course last time he was here. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he'll do another one. In fact, he, I think he is going to do one in the spring. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah last time he did this sort of basic level, like, 150 level uh, politics thing. I mean, one of the things about Chomsky's personality, I, I think it's tied in with his sort of uh, politics or whatever, but he's... Uh, you know, he, he likes to fancy himself, well, the way I'd put it he ha- is he has no quality control, but, you know, he likes to, if, you know, look at himself as a kind of democratic guy. That is, he pretty much responds to any emails, sees yeah. any student. I mean, I, so last, sem- <laughs> last semester I shared an office with Chomsky, and, um, you know, he'd ha- he'd see people in his office hours, and I'd go to this little off office, but I'd still be yeah. over here. So, like, he, he had the dumbest people coming to see him, like, saying the most basic bitch things, and it's just like, oh, jeez. Oh, um, but, you know, he, that, that's just the kind of guy he is. Um, but, uh, so, well, I'll ask another question. What do you think about Chomsky as a person, Ryan Smith? Chomsky as a person? Yeah. Yeah, he's nice enough, you know, like, I, I've, I've had the, you know, I've been able to meet with him before, like, one-on-one. Um, you know, I think he's a decent enough guy. Um, he, he doesn't listen very well. You know, well, I mean, to be fair, he can't hear very well, <laughs> but um, you know, when he does hear you, he he has a tendency to kind of, I guess, try to predict where you're going. Yeah. You know, like he he picks up on like little, uh, like keywords, and then he just kind of launches in. So you know, like it could be totally far from what you're actually trying to say. So like this one example, this wasn't with me. This was a question in a talk. Um, where I've told you this, yeah, yeah, yeah. where the person was asking about, um, like, gender, you know, like, um, you know, male, female, any other genders yeah, yeah. out there. Um, it was a Harry Potter fan for the... That, yeah. 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 You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so the person was trying to ask Chomsky, like, basically what he thought about, um, like gendered language and you know pronouns yeah. um you know like essentially like po- their political aspects and he heard the word gender he was like gender that happens in romance languages i'm gonna <laughs> talk about that but oh, well uh, there, are, there are a lot of languages that have uh, gender distinctions like you know look at look at portuguese you know, yeah. two genders oh, german you got three genders <laughs> you know yeah. and he just went on and you know the person like really tried to yeah. clarify but yeah, his Ch- mind Chomsky was said. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things I think we've talked about before is Chomsky has. I don't know if it's because he's old or it's because he's Chomsky and he has a set way of thinking, but like, he has basically canned responses for everything. Oh, totally. So yeah. when you, you know, one of the reasons people don't go to his talks around here anymore is because they're all the same, <laughs> yes. and every question people, you know, every particular. Uh, you know, question you ask him gets the same canned response. Yeah. And it's not just his responses. Like, if you go to his talks, it's like every single one is like, you know, he'll go through, for example, every talk nowadays. History of science. Yeah, yeah, he'll talk, he'll talk about Galileo. He'll talk about the same stuff all the time. The demolition of the material world. Yeah. He'll yeah. talk about, um, you know. The navigation. Right. He'll talk about, uh, the new thing is the sand bushman. You know, oh, oh that's right. Yeah, 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 right. So, you know, he, 
like gives these talks. I mean, the last time I was here, I heard about the Sam Bushman or what the caves in France. What is it, Lasso or whatever? Yeah. About I went to Lasso right before they roped it off, and he'd say that. I probably heard that like nine times. Yeah, yeah, the time yeah. I was here. So yeah. Chomsky. I mean, the thing about Chomsky is you could say, oh. If you're very Chomsky positive, which I'm not necessarily, um, you know, you can say, oh, he's a brilliant intellectual, he's just gotten old. Um, and that's definitely the case. Yeah, I don't know how much you can get out of him at this point. May, you know, maybe some. I mean, it took him, uh, you know, maybe like 12 meetings for him to understand stack sorting. With, oh, uh, yeah, that's Dave, right. <laughs> with <Yeah>. Dave. So. <laughs> well, Dave did his damnedest to yeah. get him to understand it. Like, he just kept going for it. Yeah. I don't really know why he cared that much, yeah, but, you know, got to get Chomsky on your side. Yeah, he, well, I mean, he. I think Dave maybe, in the deepest recess of his heart, he wants to be crowned Chomsky's uh, successor. Yeah. Right? Chomsky, Chomsky, Chomsky. This is the next great league. Oh, you, you want to talk about Dave Medeiros? <laughs> I, I guess we could. I think I was going to say something about Chomsky, oh, no, no, but we can come that. back to No, let's, let's do Chomsky. Yeah. Let's just do Chomsky. Yeah, what was I thinking? So it was related to his... Oh, of course. So I was thinking more about the sorts of things he says in every single talk. Oh, yeah. The other one is um, what uh, Jeff Pullum called the rocks and kittens argument. Oh. You know, the whole thing. Like, well, you know, you can, you can talk to a rock. You can talk. You can talk to a kitten. Uh, you know, that's perfectly fine. They're never going to learn language. Uh -huh. Oh, checkmate, I think. Yeah. Um. <laughs> No or a child. Or there's that. Yeah. There's the can eagles that fly swim. Oh yeah, the, the same example sentence same showing example structure sentence. dependence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you go to one Chomsky talk. You've been to them all essentially. Yeah. He rarely does anything new, and when he does, you know, people well people you know yeah. go nuts, and then you know the next day yeah, he yeah, says, yeah. Oh, "Just kidding, just kidding." <laughs> yeah, and it's always funny going to these talks because you know he. he Every, you'll always see the the uh, guy you know is, like, only there for Chomsky's politics. Like, you know, Chomsky yeah. has a linguistics talk, but, you know, there's there's a little uh, new male-looking communist guy with the little communist hats that they wear. And he comes in and he wants to get some Chomsky wisdom in, in linguistic form. And then, like, invariably those people, like, leave in the middle or they're like, what the fuck am I what, doing what here? Is <laughs> what is this? What the hell's going on? Yeah, what does he mean? Because the guy, yeah, but it gets old quick when you go to many. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Did, I, did I mention Chomsky bingo already? No, well, we haven't talked. about Oh yeah, Chomsky. Chomsky bingo. So, <laughs> the first time Chomsky came here, or at least that I had been here, yeah. um, I found some code online to make a a uh, bingo uh, card yeah. in LaTeX. So <laughs> I made Chomsky bingo cards, you know, with I filled it up with a bunch of phrases that he says oh, yeah. and they randomly generate. So that's the kind of thing. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that uh, also made one for Donald Trump, but I never, never ended up using oh, that. Oh, man. But, um, you know, well, like, well, actually, I should probably throw in my narrative about Noam Chomsky just being Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, you, you go, know that. Over, yeah, you, I, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, well, we'll put it this way. Chomsky ruffles a lot of feathers uh, for a lot of reasons, but I think there's one, one main reason he does. Um, and that is, like, Chomsky is brilliant at not necessarily linguist. I mean, well, I don't want to say he's not brilliant at linguistics, but he's brilliant mainly in like rhetoric, yeah, and, like winning arguments and like making other people look like fools. Yeah, and, like, you cannot win an argument. With you, man. Yeah, you don't even. But and this is yeah. one of the reasons. Even when you win, you lose. I I know. Like this is one of the reasons Tom kept telling me you got to hey you should go see Noam. You talk to him about your ideas, and I'm like nah. I, uh, even if I win every single battle, you still lose the war with Chomsky That's because true. he's so he's so anyway. I mean, the comparison is, you know, when Donald Trump started becoming a big thing, right? Um, you know, there's this narrative. Uh, I, I think it was, um, you know, the, who's the Dilbert guy? Scott Adams. Mm -hmm. you, you know him, right? Yes. Okay, so he, he became really popular because, you know, he had this narrative about Trump. And it's like, Trump is like a master persuader. He's like one of these people who's like uniquely good at like winning arguments. He can, he knows how he intuits people's feelings. He gives them what they want. He can, like, get what, the, you know, he can make them mad when he needs to. He, like, gets everything. And, like, he's good at linguistic judo. He can turn arguments in every which way. Yeah. And Trump has a particular persona when he does this. He's, like, the big alpha male. You know, mm -hmm. he's, like, you know, if you don't agree with Trump, you're wrong! Uh, and stuff like that. You know, he'll just shit on you. He's, like, the, you know, th this is why liberals hate him so much. He's, like, the, he's the, like, the big mean bully who's picking on the, mm -hmm. the beta leftist or whatever. <laughs> um, but... Chomsky sort of works the same way. I mean, Chomsky's not a fucking alpha male. He has a different persona when he's doing it. Yeah. Like, he's the, oh, I, I'm the intellectual, and I just say matter-of-fact things directly, right. and he, I say totally crazy things, like, just with a total pale face as if nothing's yeah. happening. 
Chomsky has this different way of doing it, but he's he shares Trump's ability to like win arguments, manipulate people, and really piss off the people who don't like him. Yeah. Uh, as opposed, like you know, when you go to a Chomsky talk, you know, let's say you go to a political talk of Chomsky, right? You know, people go there because Chomsky says a matter-of-factly what a lot of people want to believe. And this is not even to say anything bad about Chomsky's politics. I'm not interested in talking about that now. Yeah. But, like, you know, Chomsky just says things, Ooh, yeah, it felt so good. Oh, man, I just got high, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, because of this very matter-of-factly way of him saying stuff, or, like, this very almost, like, you know dirty way of construing particular things. Yeah. If, you, if you're if you anti-Chomsky in terms of politics and you go there, Chomsky's just going to piss you off. And this is why a lot of, like, good old-fashioned conservatives, they look at Chomsky and, like, they get so pissed by him because he wins. He wins every fucking time. Yeah. Same thing with people in Donald Trump. Like, if you go, go with Donald Trump in a debate and he's, you know, yeah, he might... You, he's doing a bunch of things that look stupid to you, but he's going to win the debate. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's... You know, that's why if you're Nate Silver, you're never going to see it. But, you know, same, the same, but the, the comparison I'm making is like, the, one of the reasons Chomsky has been so successful in linguistics is because he's one of these people who can just win arguments, even when he's wrong. Yeah, you know? oh, absolutely. And, and one, of the, one of the best examples is, you know, the generative semantics thing, where, you know, effectively there was this big hoo-ha back in the 70s, maybe 80s, um, about, yeah, you know, the 70s. Yeah, so, you know, the 60s. These people, anyway, yeah. George Lakoff and a couple other, Paul Postal, or is it Postal? Postal. Post, Paul, Paul Postal. Postal. You know, they had these different ideas, we don't have to go into it now, about generative yeah. semantics and uh, basically that, you know, syntax comes from semantics as opposed to the other way, which it implicitly is how Chomsky modeled it, but that's not, yeah. you know, that's another thing. But Chomsky totally embarrassed them. He, like, made them look like fools. A lot of them actually left the field or went into other disciplines. Yeah. Like, George Lakoff doesn't really do linguistics per se anymore. Yeah. He does something... They definitely went off and, like, yeah. developed their own framework. Right. So they essentially just completely abandoned uh, right. the Chomsky and yeah. view. Yeah, or the, you know, the mainstream Chomsky perspective. So that's where a lot of um, like alternative approaches to, say, syntax and mm -hmm. linguistics more generally got their start. They got their start in what some have called the linguistics wars, which is, you know, yeah. kind of hyperbolic, but, um, yeah. you know, just this split about how meaning and syntax are related to yeah. each other. But, I mean, so sociologically, Chomsky won. Yeah. The generative semanticists lost. But in terms of, I mean, you can even go to Andrew Carney, and he, he will say this, basically. I mean, he basically said this in the class on it. Yeah. He said, really, what we do now, I mean, really, generative semanticists were right. Yeah. In the sense that a lot of the things we do now, the field has moved to a lot of the factual claims that they've made. Right, exactly. They were basically right about everything. They yeah. just lost. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, and so that's the thing is that Chomsky actually ended up adopting a lot of generative semantics views. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he still, yeah. he's it, still one he's not, he's not going to give him any credit. That's the other thing. Yeah, that's the issue. Yeah. You know, Ch Chomsky, I mean, you know, a lot of people. You know, you'll hear that's about a couple people. I mean, Einstein, for example. People complain about Einstein because, you know, he when he wrote his, you know, big important things on general and, what is it? Special, Spe relativity. special relativity. Yeah. Um, he was building off of other people, but never yeah. cited them, you know, who had had similar ideas. Mm -hmm. Chomsky sort of the same way. Like, Chomsky, and this is, you alluded to this before, yeah. there are a lot of things that have happened in the field that people just sort of assume that Chomsky did it. Yeah. Because Chomsky, like, says these things sort of matter-of-factly, but... Really, uh, yeah, Chomsky has a, a, a ability to take credit for things he didn't do. Um, and yeah. that's one of the reasons, you know, Dave, if you're listening to this, don't, don't force the stack sorting so hard. He's just going he's gonna, to he's gonna be like, oh, wow, this is my idea. Yeah. You know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, really, I was advocating stack sorting in the 50s. <laughs> yes, that's... Oh, man. <laughs> Should we talk about Dave? I guess we can. Why not? Give, yeah. Give Dave some credit. Yeah, man. let's 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 hype up some Dave. So Dave, all right. So Dave Madero. Actually, you explain. You've known him more than so. You, yeah. You, so. All right. So Dave Maderos is actually a graduate of from our department, and he's still hanging around in Arizona, and he's been developing like a number of different approaches to um, initially like word order facts, but he's been gradually expanding this out to 
more or less all of syntax. Yeah, um, yeah well, you, you got to stop start at the Fibonacci stuff. Well, yeah, that's where I was going. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so he was initially known for um, this this work on like the Fibonacci numbers and its connection to like uh, like self organization and syntax, and so he derived a lot of um, a lot of effects from that. And so he started out, uh, when I got here, he was still very much known as the Fibonacci guy. Um, and then he gradually, like, in the middle of this seminar he was teaching, or maybe a little bit towards the beginning, he started moving towards um, a new model based on the idea of sorting, um, you know, essentially sorting a stack. And um, the interesting idea there was that um, the sorts of word orders you see, assuming an underlying hierarchy for, uh, you know, say, um, demonstrative, uh, what is it, demonstrative adjective numeral noun? Or yeah, is it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, or is it demonstrative numeral adjective noun? Either, either Numeral one. before adjective. Yeah, numeral before adjective. Yeah. So, you know, assuming this underlying order, the sorts of orders that you actually see attested in the world's languages are those that can be um, you know, given some word order that can be effectively st stack sorted into that universal underlying hierarchy, and the ones you don't see are the ones that can't. Right. You know, it's, it's the star two one three right, right. orders. Well, we should we should give yeah. an explanation of what exactly stack sorting is, just because yeah, sure. you handled that. Oh, okay. So stack <laughs> sorting, the the general idea. I mean, you know, Dave actually has very good visual representations yeah. and all this. And those of you in computer science might be familiar with it. Basically, the idea is you have some kind of input. Let's say, you know, a bunch of different books you want to put in an order. And they come to you in an order. Mm -hmm. And you can put one of them on the stack. Yeah. Um, then you can move the stack to the output or mm -hmm. something like that. Or you can put another book on the stack right. and keep stacking books in this stack. This stack is like sort of a, a holding area to, you know... To get the right order, right? right? So not every order can be stack sorted. And the idea, Dave's idea is like, it happens to be that the orders you see in language can yeah. be stack sorted. Yeah. The orders you don't see in language, like for example, so I mean, languages can be SVO, like Billy hit the ball, SOV, yeah. Billy the ball hit, etc, yeah. etc. But it's very weird to have a object subject verb language. So yeah. like the ball Billy hit, mm -hmm. that is like extremely rare, possibly yeah. on a test. You should note that yeah, so these are uh, neutral word orders. So right, say right. in English, you can you can say something like um, popcorn. I like. Yeah, like now it or like the ball Billy hit. You know, yeah. not the yeah. not the banana, whatever. Um, but but the yeah. argument is so like that's the a, default read. Yeah, so that's a that's a topicalized sentence, right. and so it it has a special discourse property. And so what Dave is working on are these neutral word orders. You know, like the way. Uh, Billy hit the ball sounds in English sounds right. totally so totally neutral with respect right. to like information yeah. and content. Yeah, so structure. you know the, the thing about Dave. So I actually saw Dave's presentation when I came here for the prospective student mm -hmm. week, and you know I was pretty I was very impressed actually. It was one of the reasons I came here because I was like, wow, people have crazy ideas here, uh, <laughs> and it, it's actually if you're not a linguist, it's honestly diffi difficult to explain how off the wall this is, like how different yeah. it is, because Dave was basically saying. Like, uh, you know, what constrains languages isn't like this formal system, but it's like this, it's really just like a processing constraint in a lot of yeah, ways. Um, yeah. And everything else, you just happen to learn different orders. Um, right, exactly. So, so Dave, you know, he's currently, yep, yeah, those of you who uh, run linguistics departments, he's, hey, he's looking for a job. He's, yeah. He's pretty good. I mean, there is no replacement for Dave Medeiros. You might not be interested in someone who has crazy ideas, but there's no replacement for him. There's no replacement. There's only one. So hire him. I, I sort of doubt there's anyone, you know, uh, any uh, department head who's looking for a hire in my... Yeah, but well, I, should, I should note that there is actually more than one David Medeiros oh. within syntax. <laughs> yeah. Dave has had so much trouble with this. Yeah, yeah. There, there's another Dave Medeiros. Yeah. Isn't he another Dave P. Medeiros? No, Dave is... Okay. Our Dave is okay. David P. Medeiros, so... If you're if you're looking for somebody, look for the DP. Yeah, I yeah. think I think he has a website, davidpmaderos.com. That's probably I, it. I think so. Yeah. I remember he. So you can see the stack sorting algorithm. Yeah. There's also another place on YouTube you can see the stack sorting algorithm. But oh we're not, man. We're, this is let's, not, let's, let's not mention yeah, that. Yeah, let's not get into that. Let's not get into that. <laughs> Good yeah. Enough. yeah, that that'll be that's a topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> um, yeah. So so Dave's out there. Uh, Dave actually comes from a line of 
radical thinker. So you remember his work, his dad's oh, work yeah. on color vision. Oh yeah, man, he always that, talks about this. I've never been so persuaded of something in like five minutes. Yeah. But yeah. so yeah, Dave's dad. What's you know his name? No. I think he had a TED talk or something, but he did. Yeah. Uh, although that's sort of a dishonor more than an honor, but yeah, uh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> anyway, so Dave's dad has this radical idea of how you perceive color. That is, basically, what is it? You have to have some kind of change in. Uh, uh, oh, gee, I'm, I'm trying to remember it. Basically, you need to have motion to perceive color or something like yeah. that. And if you, if the visual it's image, John Medeiros. By John the way. Medeiros. Okay. In fact, if you just type in Medeiros color vision in. Google or your favorite... Um, <laughs> Still using Google. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your favorite search engine, um, mm -hmm. it'll pop up. It's like one of the first ones, and you can see... Using Google botnet. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah, name. yeah. I don't condone the use of Google, <laughs> except for watching my YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, oh, man, you shill them. <laughs> yeah, I gotta <laughs> shill myself. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so, yeah, okay. his idea is, like, basically... There, there's a bunch of arguments for it, but you can check it out. Yeah, it's, it's funny crazy. because, uh, yeah, I mean, they... They both seem to have run into a lot of um, difficulty in getting their ideas accepted. Yeah. Though I think Dave is doing better these days. Yeah, um, Chomsky at least listened to him, sort of. Yeah. So <laughs> sort uh, of. Yeah. Sort. I mean, and of course he just thought whatever he wants to because he's Chomsky. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um. All right. So I think uh, I, I think we've uh, got some good content on our yeah, first episode. We've covered good ground. High high quality stuff. Yeah, um, top tier. Yep. So that that's a. Brief foray of uh, the field of linguistics, at least how we feel about it. We didn't actually say anything, you know. <laughs> no, not no, really. No actual content, but we'll have more of that. But, of course, most of you, most of you don't care about linguistics. Who cares? We don't care about linguistics. <laughs> um, so we were actually thinking about what we're going to do next week or whenever we put this up. Yeah, um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to look at a, a little book called uh, little What book. Darwin Got Wrong Ooh. by Jerry Fodor and Massimo Piattelli Palmarini. Yeah, so so the meme is, so this book was written, actually, let's, let me check when exactly it was written. Uh, da, 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 da. Copyright 2010, so relatively recent. This this came out a while ago, and uh, it was a little controversial. Uh, we'll look into the, again, the title is What Darwin Got Wrong. Uh, but of course, we're not just going to talk about, it's, we're not so autistic to just talk about a book, because there are a bunch of... Uh, meme tier things that we can say about how this relates to linguistics, how yeah. it relates to evolution and cognitive science and all this stuff. And we got some, we got some good narratives already. Yeah, yeah. Pretty we great. know one of the authors personally, so um, we can give oh. you a little bit a yeah. little bit on that. A little, little bit of memes on that, you know. Yeah. Good old Massimo. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think how. So I'm thinking at the very end, we got to play the whole Pillarman song. So yeah, we gotta, gotta have that. Let's have that. We're gonna gonna have that. I'm, in fact, I might start cutting it in right now, so the listeners are probably hearing it. Um, right. Yeah. So anyway, well, actually, we should do official shilling at the very end. So remember, <laughs> kids. So first, uh, you know, I got the YouTube subscribers, but you know, if you got some friends who might be interested. Eh, you know, you can recommend. It may, it makes us feel good about ourselves when we see some views on that, or we get some downloads and we hear. Well, anyway, I'm not gonna show. I'm not. I don't. I'm not that soulless. But anyway. Yeah. So recommend it. Uh, we'll be putting up some more content soon. Um, anything you want to say? Yeah. Well, I think I think that's about yeah, it. Okay. And we'll see you when we see you. On the flip side. On All the right. flip side. All right. So get ready for the Pillarman song. Ay 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 ay.